for Dr. Harvey Fishman. Um, this is another uh, paper that, um, that came out. Um, and again, it sh it's this huge link between neurodegeneration and glaucoma and T cell response. And this paper was a, a real, it's a fabulous paper, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. But basically it shows that um, my, the, the flora, this microflora, okay, in the, um, in the gut, okay, actually can very much cause damage to the optic nerve. And let me go through this paper a little bit. Now first of all, what they, what they did, um, what they're looking at here, at least in this paper, is that they're looking again at um, the immune system and how the immune system interacts very particularly with um, the eye. And what they did is they did this really ex extremely interesting experiment. I'll try to go through it without completely boring you guys. So what they did is they said, let's take two populations of mice. I keep the same thing every single time. We're going to take one population, okay, that has no microbiology of their gut. They wipe it out. And then they take another population that's just normal. And then what they do, if this, and this is a, a glaucoma model, what they do is they take these little plastic beads and they inject it into the anterior chamber of these different mice population, okay? And what they did is they looked at, um, then they sacrificed the mice and they looked at what the optic nerve looked like um, after they got a pressure spike. Okay, so this plot here shows, uh, what this plot shows is it shows um, this, the pressure spike that occurred in the mice that had the little plastic beads injected into them, and this is, the, this is the one that did not have the plastic beads. And what they found, they found two really important things. They found that the mice that had the pressure spike, that uh, the, both had a pressure spike, but the mice that didn't have any bacteria in their gut, okay, did not develop any damage to their optic nerve with this pressure spike. The ones that had the bacteria in their, in their gut developed actually optic nerve damage. And the question is, why did that occur? Well, it turns out that they found out that, the, that, that T cell activation, again, inflammatory T cells were activated in these, in these mice that, have, um, back, that had bacteria in their gut. And the question is, why, was, why, was this, uh, why did this occur? Why did the optic nerve get damaged in these, in these mice that spiked? And the reason could be, and this is a, such an interesting area, there are these proteins in, in your body called heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins are proteins that get formed and in, under cellular stress, kind of like me standing up there and not being able to see the, the words on the slide. I'm sure my heat shock proteins were going through the roof. Heat shock proteins are formed on, when a cell gets stressed, and these proteins actually essentially protect the cell from being damaged. It, pre it prevents the cell from having cellular uh, proteins that denature or folding. So these are protective molecules. These are protective, very protective. Now what happens is, and what they think is that when these, when, this, when, the, when that bacteria in your gut causes um, the immune system to recognize these heat shock proteins um, as foreign. And so you, you develop this immune system, immune response against these cells in your gut. When your eye gets stressed out, okay, in these cases of patients who had um, the spike in the eye, or patients, the mice, the mice who had uh, the, uh, the eye pressure spike, the, the cells which were sensitized against heat shock proteins because the bacteria was already sensitizing them, those immune cells then attack the optic nerve and kill the optic nerve. So, the phenomenal aspect of this really shows that, again, if the mice didn't have bacteria, and again, that's, a, that's just a, a shorthand for saying they had good bacteria. So when I say no bacteria, what we're saying is that if they, if they for instance, had good bacteria, that, that the idea would be that they wouldn't get glaucoma, okay? At least in these patients, or at least in these mice would have, which had a pressure spike over a short period of time. And so what this could suggest is that we're treating glaucoma today because of uh, an immune system that's sensitized to stresses in the eye. Now, we all know that glaucoma, um, the risk factor for glaucoma is pressure. We all know that. But we also know that glaucoma is not defined. If you look in, at, there's no book or any statement about glaucoma that says glaucoma is pressure. We all know it's not pressure, okay? It's optic nerve damage. That's what glaucoma is, 
Okay? So the question goes back to like some of the things that we were talking about yesterday is why do you have those patients with pressures of 12, 15 normal tension glaucoma? Why are normal tension glaucoma patients getting glaucoma? Their pressures are normal. Okay? So the, the, the hypothesis that people are now considering is that, and this also goes back to this whole question of the CSF pressure and the pressure across the lamina cribosa. What's one of the theories of glaucoma now? Is that, it, that it's a really a pressure differential across the lamina cribosa, so it's the difference in the pressure, the CSF versus the intraocular pressure. But regardless of what causes the optic nerve to get stressed, or in myopia, for instance, it could be that, the, again, the lamina cribosa is susceptible because it's, it's weaker or maybe let, there's less collagen in there, that the optic nerve is more susceptible to small changes in, in stressors. So what if it were that the patients who have glaucoma, the reason is that they have a stress on their optic nerve. They have a stress that it could be a transient pre pressure spike because they're taking steroids. It could be that they, have a, that they slept on their face because they have sleep apnea and that their pressures are going up for that or their oxygenation level. But who knows what that stressor is? It could be a lot of things. Later today, we might find out it's blue light. Who knows? But my point being is that, that there is something that's stressing. But the, at, the, at the root cause, it could be that, the, that the, these optic nerve cells, the retinal ganglion cells, are getting stressed out. They're producing heat shock proteins because they need something to protect them from this, this damage. And then what happens is, what, minus ones? Wow, that worked. So going back to the, this experiment, going back to this thing, what we're finding is that, you know, the big question really is, is that, you know, glaucoma really is, um, you know, it could be this thing where we're, we're basically stressing out our retinal ganglion cells in response to a lot of different um, uh, processes, as I mentioned. And it could be that, in fact, um, that, that people who have certain bacteria in their gut, okay, are more prone to having, to producing these heat shock proteins, which sensitizes their immune system, excuse me, which then, when the optic nerve gets stressed and these heat shock proteins are then expressed on the surface of the retinal ganglion cells, it then kills the retinal ganglion cells. What a cool idea is that? Right? Because it kind of, it's a universal idea that kind of explains everything. It sort of helps explain why we keep hitting our head against the wall. And it doesn't, it doesn't go against some of our other theories, right? We know, for instance, that, uh, uh, that there may be this transient gradient across the optic nerve. We know, for instance, that myopic patients have a higher, potentially have a higher rate of glaucoma because of their lamina cribosa and their stress. So all these things kind of get in there, but this actually gets at maybe one of the ways we can fix it. Now, hey, the question is how do we actually change the gut and how do we change the microbiology goes to our, your co our colleague here who got psoriasis after um, taking antibiotic and now he's desperately trying to repopulate his gut in an interesting way. We're still, we're still trying to figure that out, but I guarantee you that's going to be something that's going to be important. So this is this paper that literally just came out uh, like this week. And actually, it's really interesting. And this shows essentially the long term, the, the effects of, um, of actually trabeculectomy on the lamina cribosa. And actually, they found that the, the lamina cribosa actually kind of leveled out when you did a, when you did a trabeculectomy. They actually, you can, they actually, there are actually structural changes in the, in the lamina cribosa that occurred. And the reason I brought this up is because you can see this is a cupped out optic nerve there, but you can, you can get the sense that, you know, again, we're spending a lot of our time as clinicians trying to uh, essentially treat sort of symptoms, right? We're trying to treat the, we're trying, sort of treating like, we're treating pressure, or we're treating, um, uh, you know, inflammatory disease in the eye and so forth. We're treating all these symptoms, but the reality is that, you know, you know, wouldn't it, it would it'd be amazing if it turned out that in these cupped out eyes that all we need to do is just change our microbiome and maybe just lower the pressure a little bit. I mean, it may not be that by changing the ratio of your microbiome that you're going to um, um, essentially prevent glaucoma, but you might be able to raise that level of damage. Um, it may be that everybody's going to, it may be that when you take somebody's eye and you raise the pressure to 40 or 50, that they're going to get glaucoma no matter what the bacteria is. But it may be that you can, you can make, you can shift the ratio in such a way that the, um, the immune system doesn't attack the optic nerve at a pressure of 30, okay? I mean, so it will be interesting to see where we go. It will be interesting to look back on this talk or look back on our lives in 10, 20 years or maybe 50 years and see how, we've, how we're progressing on the gut and how that changes our understanding of glaucoma and other diseases.